Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to optimize a little bit our code and that will be changing to a new scene whenever we win. Before I optimize it, let me explain what's happening right now. So whenever I click a piece to, to rotate it, uh, the sweep function occurs as you can see right now. And what the sweep function does is it goes through all of the pieces and checks its values. Now imagine that we have a map that's 10 by 10 which will which will give us a hundred pieces that will be a little bit uh, of a waste of time to go through a hundred pieces if we only moved one and if that piece can only change a few of the connections so instead of just going through that 100 pieces if we had that puzzle we will go only through one piece to to update the current value of our puzzle so to do that we're going to create a function on game manager and then we're going to make it a public because we'll be using it on the other scripts public int quick sweep and it, this what this function will do is count the number of connections that are in a single piece so we have to receive the coordinates of that piece and here and here what you have to do is check bottom, right, left and top of the piece for connections. Now here on the sweep we already do that from to the top and to the right. I'll, we can just copy this and also create a, a value here. Int value equals zero. We can copy that. And now all we need is to also do this to the bottom and left. So compare left and what you do is if we are the piece that we are on is not on the edge because it's, it's on the edge there's nothing more to the left then if the puzzle dot pieces and this is just almost a copy of the lines above dot values and because we're checking to the left we are checking this these pieces uh, left which is 0 1 2 3 the value 3 if this is equal to 1 and puzzle dot pieces and in this case we're checking 1 to the left so minus 1 on the width h dot values and we're checking these pieces right so 0 1 the one value if this is equal to 1 then we also do value value plus plus and just to make it quicker I'm going to copy this one to the compare bottom so I can just copy so from the bottom is, is the same thinking if we are on the last line or row I never understand which one is which then we want to check if this piece is uh, below value, so the bottom value is 0, 1, 2, is equal to the next, to the piece that is below it, so minus 1 on the edge. If the piece's top value is equal to 1, if those are, if it is, then the value is plus plus. And then we can, of course, return the value. And as you can see, I, in none of these conditions I use the curly brackets, but I don't need them. I, that's just the way that the uh, if clauses work. And by the way, I could make this instead of an if inside of another if, I could do this and this. But to be perceived better, I do it like this. Okay, so now we have a function that tells us the number of connections that the piece currently has. Now, the way that we're going to do this is, so, imagine Imagine that we have this piece, right now it has zero connections, and what we'll do is, okay, um, we touch this piece, but and when we touch this piece, okay, it, that we will make that function run, so it, it says, okay, this piece has zero connections. Now, when we click it, it will have one connection, and then, so we do the difference, meaning the one connection minus the connections that it had before, and that will tell us the variance in connections. Now, so now there's plus one connections. In other cases, it will be different. For instance, if you have the piece like this, this one, this piece over there, 
Now it has one connection. Now when we rotate it, it has two connections. So one plus connection is added to the previous connections because that's the difference between between one connection and two. Two minus one is one, so that's basically it. Now to do that, that I was talking about, we have to go to the P script and on the on mouse down function before we rotate the piece, we have to create a variable called uh, difference in difference. And like, like I said, the difference is the final position minus the beginning position. So this is the beginning position. I can just put minus uh, gm dot quick sweep like that. And then after I make the difference plus equals gm dot quick sweep. So this will do a quick sweep before we rotate the piece and this will do it after. And I know this is not uh, very um, specific in the code, that does not show, but what's happening is really this one minus this one. So, and then we take that value and we add it to the current value. So instead of doing this sweep, which is pretty intensive, we just do that plus equals the difference. And just like that, we made our code much more efficient. And let's see if that's working. So if I play, and we've got some errors. OK, I forgot to specify parameters for the quick sweep low. So we have to pass it to, like I said, the coordinates of the piece. So let's do a cast for an int. And then transform dot position dot x, and then the same for the y. Transform dot position dot y, and of course do the same on the quick sweep below. Save, and there you go. Now if I hit play, let's hope that everything is working like we expected it to. So let's open. Let's see here the manager. So for for instance now this piece over here has one connection. If I rotate it, it should remain to have one connection and nothing changed, meaning this is working correctly. And as you can see, if I try to complete the the puzzle, it counts the current value correctly, just as expected. Now the next thing that we're going to do is to check if we want, meaning if this value is equal to this value. And to do that, all we have to do is in the piece after we rotate so right over here after we have the new current value we check if gm dot puzzle dot current value is equal to gm dot puzzle dot win value like that and if it is then we win and I will make here a, a function the win function that we'll do on the game manager so let's go into the main game manager, create here public void win function. And what do we want to do when we win? Well, I'm just going to put here a panel and uh, some text saying that you win and then an, uh, a button to retry the level because I don't have any more levels. Uh, but of course, you can put it to go to another level. Anyways, to do that, let's create a, a UI panel and as you can see that occupies the whole screen and I'm going to put it like uh, maybe like this something like that and let's add some text to it text you win and I'm also going to get a font from the my fonts folder uh, which, I, which is a font that I like called goth gothic Gothic, there you go, and let's attribute that that font to here. So, Gothic, there you go, and of course make it bigger, like so. And I'm not going on this in this tutorial. I'm not going to explain anything about these anchor points or whatnot. I'm just doing some simple and quick stuff. But if you want to see a tutorial about that, uh, go check the description. So, like, I think that's fine. It's a bit off-center, but 
now it's better ok you win and now let's add also a button to go to the next level so UI button and on the button go to the text and type next level and of course this canvas will appear whenever you win now let's program whenever this canvas should appear or not and by the way by default let's make it inactive so on the game manager now we have to create two additional variables which will be a public game object canvas and if we forget to turn that off we can put here on the start canvas dot set active false so that every time when we start the level it's false even if we forget to turn it off here and whenever we win so go to the win function whenever we win set this to true now the last thing that we have to do is to set the button to go to a different scene so let's add here a namespace which is the unity engine dot scene management and this is the namespace that lets us go to different scenes and now let's create here a function for the button so you can do this on here void uh, next level and you can give this a name uh, a string called next level and what we'll do on this function is the scene manager and we want to load the scene with some string just like that so we do this save and now on unity we have to drag this canvas to that game object that we just created on the script not too long ago so manager and as you can see here the canvas I'm going to drag this to the canvas like so and now I have to click on the button let's add a, a non-click function to it that is on the manager so we can drag the manager into there and the function that we want to use is a function that is on our script and it's called next level okay it's not here that's because I forgot to make this public so make this public real quick save go into unity and here you'll see that now it's there next level and of course you can name here what level you're going to and in this case I only have this level by the way let me save it because I haven't yet saved the scene so save the scene and we can name this level default level and let's copy it so that we can paste it there after let's add it to the build settings just like that and just like we were doing on the button the level that you want to go to is the default level so let's hit save and hopefully everything is working fine so if I hit play we have a cool map oh by the way let me just change the camera a bit to the side so that's in the center and change its size maybe to 3 there you go now we can see the map better now let's hit play and hopefully everything will be working fine so we've got our level let's solve it and then Ta-da! we win we want to go to the next level and on the next level in this case it's the same level but of course you can solve it again and if you end it you win again and that's basically it and that's it for today guys thank you for watching in the next tutorial we'll be making a puzzle that is generated randomly and that's it please drop a like if you liked it thank you for watching and see you in the next time